has long been a game defined by matchups. Can you get your best player in position in the right matchup to succeed and win you the game? These matchups make up the very fabric of who wins or loses. But too often, coverages, concepts, or schematics don't pit two players one-on-one -on -one, mono -e mono as much as us fans would like to see. However, there is one pairing that's different. Two players isolated outside on an island all by themselves. In a game of matchups, there's no matchup quite like corner versus wide receiver. And there's no corner quite like Jalen Ramsey or receiver quite like DK Metcalf. Whenever these two line up across from each other, every eyeball in the football universe is transfixed on that side of the field. They are the center of attention, and when the best players are matched one-on-one, -on -one, it is special. Ramsey is no stranger to shadowing the NFL's deadliest receiving threats. He possesses every freaky physical tool necessary to shut down whatever type of player he's required to run with. For years, he has had legendary battles with DeAndre Hopkins in the AFC South, two physical superstars clashing nonstop for 60 minutes. But when Ramsey was traded to the NFC West, and funny enough, so was Hopkins a few months later, a new threat to Ramsey emerged in DK Metcalf. This year, he's ascended from breakout player to flat-out destroyer of worlds in just his second season. His 1,300 yards, 80 catches, and 10 touchdowns paired with his godlike size and speed make him one of the most lethal threats to any defense. After DK had torched every team, defensive back, and anybody else you could find, heading into the Rams-Seahawks Week 10 matchup, everybody wanted to know two things. Would Ramsey shadow him, and would he shut him down? The answer? Yes. Ramsey followed Metcalf on 77% of his routes and allowed zero receptions on two targets. For all the hype that Metcalf brought into the matchup, Ramsey completely dominated him. The Rams' defensive game plan was to match Ramsey on Metcalf and man and kick zone coverage to all the 3 by one stuff the Seahawks love to use. Typically, when quarterbacks see their best receiver lined up one-on-one -on -one outside, they know that's where they're going even before the snap. But Russell Wilson almost never even looked Metcalf's way. He knew that if there was ever one corner who could match up perfectly with DK's skill set, it's Ramsey, who runs a comparable 4-4-140 that could match DK's speed, but also has the size to not get bullied straight off the ball. What Ramsey knows from studying and studying film is that DK, despite being one of the biggest receivers in the game at 235, is not actually the type to smash you at the line of scrimmage. Ramsey knows that he plays more like a speed receiver. Sure, he can obliterate you off the ball with power, but it's not really his style and technique to do it naturally during a route. It's almost more of a pre-snap decision. He wants to beat you with speed type moves of the line like single or double releases, freeze you with quickness, then get around you and burst past you with his 4-3 speed. Since Ramsey knew he didn't have any help over the top, his game plan was to be more aggressive in his alignment by playing closer to DK, but less aggressive in his style with a more hands-off approach. He knows if you try and get in a boxing match with DK at the line, he can outmuscle you and just needs one step to beat you deep. But at the same time, if you don't get hands on him and don't impede his momentum at all, that's when he gets his long stride going and arms pumping, and then can outrun really anybody in the game. It doesn't give corners a lot of room to win, but if you have the ability to find the sweet spot in between, you can shut down DK. And that's exactly what Ramsey did. The best example of Ramsey's game plan came at the beginning of the fourth quarter with the Rams winning 23-13. They dial up a five-man zone pressure with Ramsey locked in man on DK, and the Seahawks counter with their middle read or doubles concept, which I broke down in the Brady episode a few weeks back. The concept consists of two vertical routes outside with a digger post depending on the coverage up the middle. And since the Rams were condensing their zone coverage inside all game, they are really forcing Russ to hit one of those deeper isolated routes outside the numbers. Ramsey knows one of the keys to defending DK is to stay patient with all of his quick moves off the line of scrimmage, which is tough because there's always the threat of him smashing you off the line when you're sitting back. But if you overreact to DK's first or even second move, he can generate the separation to easily beat you. He knows he wants to create space up the sideline on an outside release and go route, so he does everything he can to move Ramsey inside to make room out. 
he uses what's called a hesitation release, where he flashes his upper body, arms, shoulders, eyes, and head to sell Ramsey inside. Then again, when he fakes a hezzy single, where he pretends like he's gonna stick outside, then fly back in. All of that to create room out wide. He wants to keep Ramsey as far away from where his route is going as possible. And this step, with this separation and quickness, would destroy 99% of NFL corners, but not Ramsey. He has done his homework and has full confidence in his technique. He knows that the key to DK's release is all in his hips. No matter what kind of single, double, diamond release, anything DK gives him, his hips will point directly to where his route is headed. His hips don't lie. Ramsey doesn't overreact to the hezzy release, but just mirrors DK's movement. You can see him staring down at his hips. He knows DK prefers to speed around him, so he gets right in his grill and sticks tight to him in coverage. Even if DK does try a power move off the line, it's nothing Ramsey can't handle. He's very patient, but if he doesn't throw his punch at the perfect time, DK will fly up the sideline. So after the release, he uses that incredible 33 and a half inch reach to attack DK's shoulder pad to slow down his momentum. Now he's not as explosive off the ball and isn't gathering speed. And what's really important is that Ramsey isn't leaning too hard into him when he wipes his arm off. In fact, Ramsey's expecting it. He stays perfectly balanced once his arm is disengaged, then contacts DK and continues to slow his momentum. The goal for DK, after using this electric move off the line, is to stack here and preserve space up the sideline for Russ to throw. But Ramsey closes that space, stays over the top, and doesn't allow room for him to adjust. Russ still throws a near-perfect ball. If DK had been able to build up and continue to gain speed, this would have been a dime. But everything Ramsey did early in the play contributes to the ball being just that little bit off its mark, and the pass falls incomplete. The Rams went on to win the game 23-16, setting the stage for a pivotal rematch in Week 16 with massive playoff implications. The Rams opted to play much more zone coverage this time around, which meant Ramsey didn't follow DK nearly as much, and that was a large reason why he garnered 8 targets, 6 catches, and 59 yards. Since Ramsey stayed more to one side of the field in zone, the Seahawks moved DK around a ton, whether it was bumping him inside or motioning him away to create a more favorable matchup. But despite the Rams' zone-heavy approach, that does not mean the two weren't matched up one-on-one -on -one plenty of times. Ramsey's game plan heading into this matchup was to be a bit more aggressive knowing he'd have more help over the top. Though the Rams played a lot of zone, as I just mentioned, here's an example of them lining up in cover two man. Because Ramsey has safety help, he can be more physical at the line since he doesn't have to worry about getting beat deep. But while he altered his game plan, DK also made several changes of his own. He knows Ramsey is aware of the move area, which is typically 14 to 18 yards downfield where most deep rats will make their breaks. If the receiver hasn't broken in that 14 to 18 yard area, the corner then knows at that point they're going deep. DK's done his homework and knows what Ramsey's anticipating. He handles his aggressive press coverage, then just as he's approaching the move area, Ramsey, who is in phase, starts to turn his head to locate the ball, which is the exact second that DK unleashes his push-by technique, which uses Ramsey's momentum against him to create separation. It sends him flying, and if the ball wasn't tipped, DK would have secured another catch with a lot of room to run. Showing him a successful push-by technique would have paid off later in the game after after the Seahawks continued to set the Rams up with different variations of middle read. They ran the normal vertical version early on, but DK took an inside release. Then with Ramsey on DK, ran out routes to set up the double move a few minutes after that. With Ramsey in man and pressed on DK, he once again went to the push by, but this time Ramsey was ready. However, since it was a double move, DK sprung free downfield, but the protection didn't hold up. The Seahawks went on to win 20-9 to secure the division title while simultaneously jeopardizing the Rams' postseason plans heading into Week 17. The battle between these two players is representative of the battle between these two teams and will be for years to come. Both Ramsey and DK have freaky physical abilities that put each of them in the one percentile of athletic gifts of anybody in the entire league. But what makes them truly, truly special is how they attack one another with their minds. It's not just having the rare physical ability, but knowing how to actually use it in action to beat the man across from you. 
this matchup, which we'll see twice a year for potentially the next five or even more seasons, will impact the balance of power in the NFC West in conference as we head into the future. There are many matchups in this rivalry that makes Rams-Seahawks games so much fun to watch. Pete Carroll, Sean McVay, Russell Wilson, Aaron Donald. But now that DK Metcalf has proven himself as an elite force in the league, and Jalen Ramsey having already played at an all-pro level for years, the Week 10 and 16 matchups between the two are early chapters in the stories of their careers and foreshadow how future matchups will unfold. Whenever these teams face each other, the battle between DK Metcalf and Jalen Ramsey is on. These two will give everything they've got to conquer the other. Power, finesse, mind, body, and soul. When they're one-on-one, -on -one, all alone on an island, it is going down. It's 